welcome to the Marley Bird YouTube channel. In this video, I will show you how to make the Cabled Hooded Cowl by Quaylen Stark. Isn't this so great? This lovely cowl is made in three pieces and you seam them all together to create an accessory that is a must have. This is a free pattern available at redheart.com and in the pattern, you will find a full list of the materials you need to make this really beautiful cable hooded cowl. The link to the free pattern is available in the video description box right below this video. And while you're down there, please smash that like button as my kids say. Once you have the pattern and your materials, join me back here and I will teach you everything you need to know to make this cable hooded cowl. The cable hooded cowl is a one size fits most pattern. So we will begin with a slip knot directly onto our hook and then you will chain 36. I am going to use a smaller number of chains for demonstration purposes in this video. So I'm just going to do that many. Once you get all 36 chains, you want to single crochet in the second chain from hook. Remember you never count the loop on your hook as a stitch. So you skip one chain, go to the second chain, and you will single crochet into that chain. You will then carry on single crocheting into each chain all the way to the end. At the end of the row, you will have 35 single crochets. Once you have 35 single crochets, go ahead and chain one and turn, and you are going to single crochet in that first single crochet and in each single crochet to the end. Don't forget to single crochet in the very last stitch. Chain one and turn. Rows three through 35 are just a repeat of row two. So you will simply single crochet into each single crochet all the way down the row until you get to the end of row 35. When you get to the end of row 35, your work will look just like this. This is actually a sample with all 35 single crochets across and I've worked up all 35 rows. You'll notice I have placed a marker on the right side of my work. This is the end of row 35. As I turn my work and I begin row 36, I'm going to begin to increase at the corners of my piece. So what I'm going to notice here is every time I'm on the side that doesn't have a marker, I will be working an increase. On the side that does have the marker, I will just be working back and forth. The increase is really super simple. To work the increase for this pattern, you will just place two single crochets into the first stitch, single crochet to the last stitch of the row, and place two single crochets in that stitch. I'm coming up to the last stitch of my row, and I will work two single crochets into this last stitch. And I have now increased my total number of stitches from 35 to 37 by working an increase here and an increase here. The following row is simply just a chain one and single crochet in each stitch all the way down the row without increasing. So you wanna make sure that you work in every single stitch all the way down the row. Rows 38 through 79 are just a repeat of these last two rows. You're gonna do an increase row and then a regular row, an increase row and a regular row. You then finish with a row 80, which is an increase row and you fasten off your work. When it is all complete, your work will look a little something like this. Obviously yours is a little bit bigger than this, but you will have the same shape. You have a nice square portion right here, and this is where the head of the cowl is. This is rows um, one through 35, and then rows 36 through 80, that's where you were increasing every other row along the outside to get that nice triangular shape. 
Now don't forget, you will need two of these panels. So make sure that you take the time after you finish the first one to complete a second one identical to it. I have left my markers on the actual fabric so that way I know which side is going to be my right side of the fabric and that will be important when it's time to seam them together. But this is how you make the side panels of the cowl. Now that we know how to make the side panels, let's jump in and learn how to make this really wonderful and awe-inspiring crocheted cable stitch. This lovely cable stitch is what adds that big bang to this cabled hooded cowl. You can see here that we start down here sort of at a tip and we will be increasing out our stitches until we get to where I've marked row seven with my markers. It's once we get past row seven that we begin to work a repeat to get this nice cabling pattern. I will be honest with you, the stitches from this point to row seven look a little bit mumbled and clumped up a little bit as we're working along. So I'm going to give you a couple different tips to hopefully help you better see those post stitches we're going to be working into. Um, so let's go ahead, grab your hook, grab your yarn, and let's work this cable stitch pattern together. This cable stitch pattern has us begin with an adjustable ring. Let me show you how I start my adjustable rings. If you have a way that you prefer, you can go ahead and use that. This is how I do mine. I start mine off just like I do when I'm working a slip knot. I'll put the tail of my yarn in my left hand, take my working yarn, wrap it around my forefinger and middle finger. When I come back up, I cross over. Now, as I turn my hand over, see how that crossover yarn is back here? If I take my hook, go underneath that front loop and grab the back loop and just pull it up, okay? My fingers are still in there, you see that? That hole right there where my fingers are, that is my adjustable ring. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to pinch this circle and take my fingers out. See that crossover? I don't want to lose that, so I'm just going to hang on to that, and I will adjust. See, I'm still hanging on to it. I'm just adjusting the yarn so I can get a hold of it. Now I'm going to hold it over here in this hand. I still kind of put my finger through that adjustable ring there so that way it doesn't go anywhere, and then I continue on with the pattern. We start off with a chain one. And we're going to do two single crochets, two double crochets, and two single crochets all into this big space. So imagine this is just a really big chain we're working into, okay? So I will go into that space, yarn over, and pull up a loop. Yarn over, draw through two. Okay, so I just did a single. We have to do another one. Go into that space, yarn over, pull up a loop yarn over, draw through two. Now we have to do two doubles. So I yarn over my hook, go into the space, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, draw through two, yarn over, draw through two. Notice I have not let this crossover go. I'm not letting it disappear yet. I have to do another double crochet into that large space. And now I have to do two singles. So there's one and there's two. Now I will go ahead and chain one and turn. So I'm just turning my work. You see, I just turned my work. And this is where I will now tighten up my adjustable ring. So I can hold my stitches here and grabbing my tail from my adjustable ring. See, it's still crossed over right there. I just give it a gentle pull and that tail is working underneath those loops that I created the stitches with, and it's just pulling that together really nice and closed. We'll go back later and weave in this tail to keep that closed, but that is what creates that really nice finishing point there for this particular stitch pattern, okay? Now, as I worked the first cable stitch pattern that I showed you, this one right here, this little sample, I was thinking to myself, how do I go about showing you how to do these stitches so that they'll show up well on camera? And I think that if I change colors every rows, that might really help you be able to see where the stitches are that I'm making and where the stitches are we need to work into. So for the next set of rows, I'm gonna be changing colors every 
rows, but you do not do that in your pattern. I'm simply doing it to make the video better, hopefully, so that you'll be able to see the stitches better, okay? So I wanted to point that out. I'm gonna go to purple for this next row, and then I'll go back to green, go back to purple, so on and so forth. And let's see if that works. All right, I have my purple on my hook, and I'm ready to jump into row two. Are you ready? We want to single crochet in the first two stitches. So I'm going to single crochet in my first two stitches. Now we get to a stitch we haven't used yet, which is a back post double crochet. So around the next stitch, which is a double crochet, that next stitch there is a double crochet, we are going to do a back post double crochet. So you yarn over your hook. We're going to go behind our work here and coming from this side of that stitch, we're going to work around that post, take our hook and go around the other side of the stitch. Okay, you see that? See how the hook looks like I can just see the hook above the post of that stitch on this side? I will now yarn over my hook and I'm going to bring my hook back that same path. So I'm going to come out that side I just went around and I'm going to come out that side I just went in and when I pop it up, I want to make sure that that yarn over that I just made that I pulled back through is in front of these two loops that were already on my hook. Okay, now I just complete my double crochet as normal. So that's a back post double crochet. Now we're going to place two single crochets between these two double crochets. So the double crochet we just did our back post double crochet in. We're going to go right next to it, literally not into a stitch or anything, it's just into that space, and we will do two single crochets. So there's one and two, okay? Now, this next double crochet right here, we're going to do another back post double crochet. So I've yarned over my hook. I'm going to go in through this side and come out the opposite side of that post of the double. Yarn over, bring my hook back that same path. You can see there that yarn over that I pulled through right there, it's in front of these two stitches that were already, or loops that were already on my hook. Yarn over, draw through two, yarn over, draw through two. Now I finish off by putting a single crochet in the last two single crochet. So what we've done here, I'm not gonna chain one and turn yet, We've done two singles, we worked a back post, we've done two singles between those two doubles from the previous row, we've done another back post double crochet, and then two singles. So we have increased two stitches right there. Please forgive my, my nail, I chipped it right before I started doing the video, so I apologize. Um, but anyways, <laughs> uh, so we have just increased two stitches. Now I'm going to go ahead and change colors so that way you can better see the next row. But at the end of this row, you would go ahead and you would change, chain one and turn your work. Let's begin row three. I did finish with my chain one and I've turned. I want a single crochet in the first two stitches. So there's one and two. Now I want to do two front post double crochets around or in that back post double crochet. So that right there, see that purple stitch? That was our back post double crochet. And now we want to work two front post double crochet around that one stitch. We're working an increase. So let's go ahead, yarn over our hook, and working from this side in the front this time, going around the post of that stitch, around to the back. See when we do the front post, the post is actually in front of our hook, and when we did the back post, our, our hook was in front of the post. Kind of a little difference there. Once your hook is in place, go ahead and yarn over, and then bring your hook back that same path. Once again, making sure that that yarn over is in front of the two loops that were on your hook. Then yarn over, draw through two. Yarn over, draw through two. So that's one front post double crochet. We have to do that again. So we yarn over our hook, going from this side of the post, going behind it, even though I'm in the front, that's why it's called a front post. Yarn over, go back that same path, and then 
complete our stitch. So now I've worked two stitches around that one, okay? If you're having a hard time seeing your post, you can take a stitch marker at this point and place it directly on those post stitches just so that you know where they are when you come back to them on the next row. Let me show you what I mean. I'm gonna grab two removable stitch markers here and I am literally just going to place it around each one of those post stitches just so I can better see them, okay? So I'm just going to go like that and go like that. So now I have each of those post stitches marked and I can see them better when I come back on the next row. Let's carry on. So we did our two front posts around the back post. Now we want to single crochet in the next two stitches. So I will single crochet in that one, single crochet in that one, and now it says repeat from star, which means we're at our next, this is the back post we did on the previous row. So we wanna do two front posts in this one again. So I will yarn over my hook, go around that post, yarn over, pull my loop up, and complete my double. I wanna do that again, so I yarn over, go around that post again, yarn over, pull up a loop, and complete my double. Again, it's a little tricky to see those posts, so if you wanna use a marker, you can go ahead and we can grab this marker and just mark each one of those posts. You don't have to do this, but if it helps you see the stitches better, then please do that. Can you see that there? So there's one post there and there's one post there. And I carry on with the pattern, I will put a single crochet in each of the next two. Okay, you see that? So it looks a little bit crazy right here because we have all these stitch markers, but we have two singles and then we did two front post double crochet into one stitch and then we did two singles and then we did two front post double crochet around one stitch and then we did two singles. Now we would go ahead, chain one and turn. Let me go ahead and change my color once again. I have changed colors and I'm ready to begin row four, which starts off with a single crochet in the first two stitches. The next stitch that we will work is a back post double crochet. So I will yarn over my hook to prep my work for a double crochet. And I wanna go around the next post. Now we did mark these post stitches so that we could easily find them. So what I can do here is I can find the next post. See, I have it marked right there. And I can just say, oh, there's my marked stitch. So I'm gonna go around the post of that one that I have marked, see that? Yarn over, pull my yarn through, and then complete my double crochet. Now, I wanna place one single crochet between that marked stitch right there and that marked stitch right there. So between those two post stitches, I'm going to place one single crochet. So I'm gonna place a single crochet. It's not into a stitch, it's just between those two post stitches. Now I'm going to do another back post double crochet around the next stitch, the next post. So this was a front post double crochet from the previous row. All right, see it's marked right there. Let's go ahead and do the back post double crochet. And voila, all right. Now I will do a single crochet in the next two stitches. And we're gonna do this all again. So we will do a back post double crochet around the next post stitch. So if I turn my work over, there's my marker. So I just wanna go around that post. You See that? Pull that through and work my double crochet. So that's my back post double crochet. I wanna put one single crochet between those two markers. See how it's between the markers there? Just putting a single crochet there. It's not into a stitch, it's literally just between those markers. Now I have to do another back post double crochet around the next post. It's the next one that I had marked. 
yarn over, pull up a loop, complete my double crochet. And then I finish off with the single crochet in the last two. Chain one and turn. Let's take a look at what this looks like. So it looks like a jumbled mess right now, right? I told you at the start that it looks a little bit of a jumbled mess here at the beginning. But we can remove our markers because we don't need them anymore, right? We already used those stitches, so I can remove them. We can add them again if we want. You don't have to add them if you don't want. I just wanted to find some ways for you guys to see where the stitches are that we're trying to place. But you can see we're starting to create a nice three-dimensional fabric here and our stitches are starting to rise up off the fabric and that's where we will start to create our cables. Let me go ahead and change the color and we'll begin row five. Here we are at row five and we start off with a single crochet in the first two stitches. Now we want to do a front post double crochet around those post stitches right there. So I don't have them marked, but I can see them, right? I can see them lifting off the fabric. So I will go ahead, yarn over my hook and work my front post double crochet around that post stitch there. Now, in this next stitch that we did there, it was the stitch that was between those post stitches, we want to place two single crochet. So there's one and there's two. Pretty easy so far, right? Now we want to go ahead and do another front post double crochet around the next post stitch. We're just doing one. Make sure I don't slip my yarn there. See that so far? Now I want a single crochet in the next two stitches. I will work a front post double crochet around the next post stitch. I will put two single crochets into the next stitch. A front post double crochet around the next post stitch. and then a single crochet in each of the last two stitches. It's a pretty easy row, right? It's pretty easy. There weren't uh, many increases, there weren't any increases in the actual post stitches here, but we did increase right here between the post stitches and right there between the post stitches, okay? You finish off this row by chaining one and turning your work. Yep, I gotta change my color. Let's do that. Row six, this one's a doozy and we're gonna use our markers once again, okay? We start off row six by single crocheting in the first two stitches. Now we wanna do a back post double crochet around the next stitch. So I can see my post stitch right there. I don't have it marked, I can see it. And I'm going to go around the post and work my back post double crochet. I will single crochet in the next two stitches. So there's one and here's two. Now this is where it's gonna get tricky because we're going to work increases in the post stitch. So we are going to place two back post double crochets around the next post stitch. So let's go ahead, we yarn over our hook, find the next post stitch, it's right here and we're gonna do two back post double crochets. So let's get our first one done. There's one. I'm gonna take my marker and I'm gonna place it literally right around the post of that stitch I just created. I'll show you what it looks like. See, I literally just have it around the post of the stitch I just created. Now I have to do another one, okay? So I'm going to yarn over my hook can you see, there's the post of the stitch I need to go around, so I'm going around it once again. It's like I'm going underneath where I went before. Can you see that? Yarning over, pulling up a loop, yarn over, draw through two, yarn over, draw through two. So that was our second one, so I'm gonna mark that one so that way we can see. All right. I pushed my marker on that side. I don't know why I did that. I want them 
I want my marker on this side. All right, so I have both of my post stitches I just created marked, all right, so that way I can find them. So I just did two back post double crochets around that one front post double crochet of the last row. Now I will single crochet in the next two stitches. So I will single into this one and single into this one. I want to do that all again, okay? So in this next post stitch here, I'm going to increase again. So I will yarn over, go around that post stitch. You see it? That's the post stitch from the row below. It's the green. We'll work the first back post double crochet. And then we're going to do the second one. All right, let's go ahead. Let's add our marker again, just to be consistent. Make sure it's just around that post. Now I'm going to come back, going around that same post, yarn over, pull up a loop. So I have three loops on my hook, yarn over, draw through two, yarn over, draw through two. So I just completed two back post double crochet around one. Let's go ahead and put our marker around that second post. Can you guys see what I've done there? So those are the two post stitches and I have them marked. Okay, I'll put a single crochet in the next two stitches. I have to work a singular back post double crochet around the next post stitch. And then I finish off with a single crochet in the last two stitches. Chain one and turn. Let's take a look at what it looks like. Looks kind of like a hot mess, right? But can you see, hopefully you can, with our stitches marked there, I can see, oh, I have two post stitches. I'm going to be growing on those, right? So those post stitches represent our increase that we just did on that row. But you can see here, this is where our cable is really starting to take action. Let me change colors and we'll move on to row seven. Row seven, here we go. We will single crochet in the first two single crochet. Now we're going to work an increase on this side. So we have our post stitch here and we're going to place two front post double crochet around that one stitch. So there's one and then we're going to do our second one. Notice I always do the second one underneath the first one. I find that it's easier to find where my post stitches are later. Um, I'm going to leave those unmarked this time and let's see how we work along without those being marked and see if we can find them. So I just did my two front post double crochet around the back post from the last row. I will single crochet in the next stitch. And I will do two single crochets in the next stitch. Now, here we are. This is where we start to do actual cables. Can you believe it? It's time for an actual cable. So in your pattern, you will find the instructions for the next set of what we're getting ready to talk about. It's on the front page of the pattern, okay? What we are going to do here is we are going to yarn over our hook twice because the cables are constructed using treble crochets. We are going to skip over this post stitch, this post stitch, all of those single crochets, and we're going to come over here to this post stitch. It's the first one marked here, and we're going to work a front post treble. So I'm going to go around the post of that stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, draw through two, yarn over, draw through two, yarn over, draw through two. Now I'm going to go to the next marked stitch there. It's the next post. So I yarn over my hook twice, go to the next post, insert my hook around the post, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, draw through two, yarn over, draw through two, yarn over, draw through two. Okay, you with me there so far? Just for ease, I'm going to take these stitch markers off because we've used those, okay? So I want to make sure we can kind of see what's going on. 
Now, we are gonna come back over here and we're going to now work front post treble crochets around these stitches. And we're gonna do it in front of these and we are going to completely skip over all of those single crochets. We're not going to use them, okay? I just wanna make sure that's clear. When I come back over here, I also wanna make sure I'm using the first uh, double crochet, I guess that was a back post double crochet on the previous row. I wanna use the furthest one away and then come back to the closest one, okay? So when we went this way, we went with the closest one and then the furthest. When we come back this way, we start with the furthest and then go to the closest, okay? We're gonna go in front of these stitches. So I will yarn over my hook twice. I'm gonna come back over here to this first marked one, you see that? I'm gonna go around that post, yarn over, pull up a loop, and then complete my treble. Now I wanna do the same thing for the next one, so I yarn over my hook twice, come back to the second one, insert my hook around that post, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, draw through two, yarn over, draw through two, yarn over, draw through two. All right, so now I have used all four of those post stitches. I've created four treble crochet post stitches, okay? And by working this increase right here, and we're gonna work another increase over here, that's gonna make up those single crochets that we skipped there in the center. Let me go ahead and remove these markers so that we can see what's going on here. All right, so now we've used all these post stitches. I'm gonna go to this single crochet over here. It's the first single crochet outside of this post stitch and I will place two single crochets into that stitch. Now I'm gonna go to the next stitch and place one single crochet. Okay? To the next post stitch, I'm gonna work an increase again. So I'm going to yarn over my hook and work a front post double crochet around this post stitch and then do it again around the same one. We know how to do this. We've been doing this a couple times now. And then in these last two stitches, we will place a single crochet in the last two. Woo, that's a lot of work there. Can you see how the stitches are really starting to get some dimension here? And by crossing these over here, that is our first cable that we're creating. Let me pull this in so we can see here. As you take a look down here, let's see, that's kind of blurry. All right, so as I take a look down here, see that cable? That is what we just created right there. So it does eventually begin to look like something, but right now it just looks kind of like a blob. So if yours looks like a blob too, don't worry, that's what it's supposed to look like, all right? So what I'm gonna do now is as we carry on, I'm going to continue on with just one color, okay? So we've worked with the two colors all through row seven, which is what we were working to get this increased point. And now we wanna put a marker on either side of row seven because that is um, the point at which we will begin to join our side panels that we already created to this cable stitch pattern. So what you need to do, it's really just simple, just take a marker and just put it into the side of that last stitch and the first stitch of row seven, okay? They're just gonna hang out there. You can see, I even have them on here still marked out. You see that? And I'm gonna go ahead and carry on with this green color and we will move on to the next portion of the cable pattern. Now the next portion of the cable pattern, rows eight through 15, that's your repeat. Cause you will repeat eight through 15, eight through 15, eight through 15, until you get the total length for the cable portion that you need. So as long as you have 18 stitches on your little sample right here, you've worked through all the stitches with me, you should have no problem going on to this next part. 
The only new stitch you're going to learn is the cable back. And that just means we're going to work those um, treble crochet post stitches behind the treble crochet post stitches from before. It's really not that difficult. I'll show you how to do that. But you know all the stitches we're getting ready to do. It's just going to take some patience on your part and make sure we're following along with the pattern. So if you're ready to go, let's jump in with row eight using only one color this time. I will use stitch markers along the way so we can better see where these stitches are that we need to work into, but um, I'm ready to get started. At the end of row seven, we chain one and turn and we are beginning row eight. So let's jump in. We will single crochet in the first two stitches. We will back post double crochet in the next two stitches. So I can see my post stitches here. Remember, we worked an increase here, so we have two. So I wanna make sure I go over the first, the first one and work my back post double and then do the next one. I will now single crochet in the next two stitches. So I will single in the first one and single in the next one. Now the pattern doesn't say this specifically, but there is one more stitch right there and we're just going to skip it, okay? You're not gonna work into it. It doesn't specify that in the pattern, but I do wanna point out, we just are not going to use that stitch, okay? The next stitch we want to do is a back post double crochet over the next two stitches. So we want to make sure we're going to use these two front post trebles, okay? So here's the first one. We will do our back post and do one around the next one. Once you've done those, between those two stitches from the row below, you see that? See that space once again? It's not an actual stitch, it's just a space. We want to place two single crochets there. So there's one and there's two. For those of you who want to keep track here, one of those singles represents the one we skipped here. The other one will represent one that we skip over here, okay? So we have those two stitches right there, and now we're going to do back post double crochet around those. So I want to make sure I go around those ones and do my back post doubles. I will skip one here. It doesn't say that in the pattern. I'll skip one and I'm gonna single crochet in the next two. Now I'm back to, I can feel my post stitches here. Remember we worked an increase here. So I'm going to do a back post double crochet around the first post and a back post double crochet around the next post and I finish off with a single in each of the next two. Really quickly, for those of you who um, might be getting a little bit confused on when you do a front post or a back post, think of it this way. When you're on the back of the work, we want those post stitches to show up on the other side. So we're going to do a back post double crochet. When we're on the front of the work, we want those stitches to show up on the front. So we're going to do a front post double crochet or treble crochet. Does that make sense? So if we're on the back, we want our stitches to show up on the other side. So if you're on the back, you're gonna do a back post. If you're on the front, you're gonna do a front post. All right, I don't know if that little trick helps you or not, but it helps me when I'm working along with post stitches to know whether I'm doing a front post or a back post in a pattern like this. At the end of row eight, you finish off with your chain one and turn, and voila, we can really begin to see that our cables are starting to happen. So here we go. Let's jump into row nine. Row nine begins with a single crochet in the first stitch and two single crochets in the next stitch. 
So there's one and there's two. Now we're going to do a backwards cable or a back cable. And all that means is we're going to work our cable stitch similar to this one, only instead of our stitches when we come onto this side, they going in going in front of the post, we're going to go behind. So let me show you how this works. Let's prep our hook by yarning over twice. We will skip this post stitch, this post stitch, that single, that single. We're going to these post stitches right here. So those are the first two we're going to deal with. We'll go around the first one and work our front post treble. Go around the next one and work our front post treble. Okay. Now we want to go back and work these two, right? And before we just worked back and we worked in front of these. This time we want to go back and we're going to work behind them. So what I'm going to do here to start, just to make it easier for you to see, this is the post stitch we want to, to work into. So there's that one there, and then let's use a different color so you can see. And we have this one here. So that's what we're going back to get into. We want to get back, we're going to work the blue one first, and then we'll work the orange one. So I have to prep my hook, so I yarn over twice. And what I like to do is these post stitches I just created, I'm going to push those essentially out of the way when I do this. I'm going to take my hook, I'm going to go behind them, and see how I'm behind these ones. I'm gonna get this post stitch that I want, the one with the blue, okay? So I'm around it. See how I can just shove those down, all right? Can you see how I did that? So I shoved the ones I created down. I'm essentially kind of pulling up the ones that I wanna get into. So this one here that I just went around, that's the blue marker that I had. So I will yarn over, draw, that loop from behind that post and then complete my treble. Okay. Now I work my treble again. So I yarn over twice and again, keeping those pushed down, I'm going to come over here to where my orange one is. Can you see it? See that how that marker really helps to see that. So that's the, the post stitch I want to work around. It's the one that has the orange marker and I work my front post treble around that one. When all is said and done and the stitches are back in place, can you see that? See how now it looks like the stitches we did first are in front of the stitches we did second, and that's what we want. That's what it means by the back cable or the backwards cable or however you want to, to view it. Once you have done that cable stitch, you will now go ahead, you will do two single crochets into each one of the next two stitches. So we have two stitches here. So I will do two single crochets in the first one and two single crochets in the next one. And now we're going to do another cable pattern here, okay? So let's go ahead and let's use our markers again. We'll put our blue one around the one we wanna get to first when we get to it. And I'll use my orange one around the second one just so that we can easily find them, all right? You ready? We gotta come all the way over here and work our treble, front post trebles all the way over here first. So I will yarn over my hook twice come all the way over here and work my front post treble around this one. Yarn over my hook twice, work my front post treble around this next one. Now again, this cable is the back or the backwards one, okay? So we wanna make sure we're going to get to those post stitches behind these ones. So I will yarn over my hook twice go behind those ones to come over here to where my blue marker is, right? That's the, that's the post I want. I'm gonna go around it. I, I find it easier to go around it and then push those stitches out of the way. So now I'm there and I can see it, okay? Can you see that? So there, there it is right there. And I can complete my treble. 
prep the next treble. Right here next to that blue one, here's the one with the orange. So I want to go around that one. Voila, everything is done, everything's in place. The stitches are where I need them to be. This first stitch after that post, I'm gonna do two single crochets into that one. And then do one single crochet in the last one. So here's something I wanna point out. Even though I've done two single crochets there, I've done two single crochets here, like two extras here, and I've done two here, I still have 18 stitches. We have not increased our stitch count, okay? Makes sense? It looks like a lot of mumbo jumbo going on there with all of these markers, but we can take the markers out now because those we've already used those stitches. We don't need to know where they are anymore. Hopefully that helped you better see where the stitches were we were going after. And that's the end of row nine. So I chain one and I turn. And we already know that when we work our post stitches on this side, they're going to be back post because we're looking at the back of our work. So let's go ahead and jump into row 10. We start off with a single crochet in the first two single crochets. Once again, the pattern does not indicate that we're gonna skip that stitch, but we are going to skip that stitch, okay? So that's perfectly normal. We're not gonna do anything into that next single crochet there. We will work a back post double crochet over the next two stitches. So this next one, we find it, here it is, you see it, it's right there. So we're gonna do our back post double crochet around that one. And we're gonna do it around the next one. So if you use your fingers, just kind of feel it, you see it right there. So we're gonna do our back post around that one. Then, just like before, between our cable stitches here, just between those posts, we will do two single crochets just in that space. Okay, and now we'll do two back post double crochet around the next two post stitches. Now, it doesn't say this in the pattern, but I will tell you, skip that first stitch, single crochet in the next two. So we have a total of four single crochets right here. We have four from the previous row. We're gonna skip the first one, put a single in the next two and skip the next one, all right? And now we're back over here to this side and we're gonna do our front or our back post doubles again. So I gotta find my post stitch, there it is. I'll work my back post double. Work my back post double in the next one. Work my two single crochets in that space between all of those post stitches from the previous row. And then work my back post double on this side. My back post double on this side. Doesn't say this in the pattern, but I will tell you, we're gonna skip that first one and we will single crochet in the last two single crochets. And remember, whenever we skipped those stitches, we made up for it by placing those extra stitches between all of those post stitches at those points. All right, so that's row 10. Row 10 finishes off with a chain one and turn. And this is where we really start to, to see the work. Can you see the cables really starting to cross over right there? And then we have a crossover cable right here and right here. Let's bring in our other one. So we have our cross here and we just created these crosses. So the next step now is to work a couple rows even and then we'll cross again and then we're back to our center cross. Because the center cross only happens, like there's a center cross and then see how there's a, there's a total cross here and then a center cross and then there's like just the crosses over here and then a center cross like so on and so forth, okay? So here we are, we are on row 11. Row 11 and 12 I think are the easiest rows. We will single crochet in the first two. And then we're gonna front post double crochet around the next two. Then 
single crochet in the next two. Front post, double crochet around the next two. And you just continue this all the way down. It's like you're working the stitches just as what they are. Like I'm looking at front post, I'm and I will front post double crochet. I'm looking at singles, I just single. All right, it's pretty easy because this is just, it's like we're just keeping the pattern, maintaining the pattern to get this nice segmentation here between all of the cable stitches. By now, I'm hoping you can easily see how those post stitches look, whether you're on the right side or the wrong side. You can feel the actual fabric lifting up and you can work those post stitches without any issues. But hey, if you need to use the markers still, don't feel ashamed about it. That's what they're for. They're there to um, be helpful to you. All right, so there's that so far. The end of row 11, we chain one and turn. And row 12 is relatively easy. We will single crochet in the first two. And then back post, okay, again, those are post stitches, so we're just going to work our back post double crochet over the next two. And then single crochet over the next two. So once again, if we're looking at singles, we're singling. If we're looking at post stitches, we're on our back side, so we're doing a back post double crochet. Make sense? That's what makes row 11 and 12 are just like this reprieve of, oh, I don't have to do a lot of extra work. It's, it's pretty easy, I think. <laughs> All right, let's see here. Almost to the end of row 12. I still have the same number of stitches. Once we get past row seven and we have 18 stitches, we maintain those 18 stitches, okay? Here we are, end of row 12, chain one, and turn. What? Look how great that looks. So much fun happening here. All right? Now, rows 13 and 14 are a repeat of rows 9 and 10 because we want to get this nice crossover cable again. So we're going to work um, 9 and 10 again, and then we work row 15 one more time. Then it begins a repeat of rows 8 through 15. So let's go ahead and work through rows 9 and 10, which would be 13 and 14, and then we'll do 15. You're almost there. We almost got this. And then you're on your way until you get to the end of this cable pattern. It's really a lot of fun. All right, row 9. Okay, row 9. We start off with a single crochet in the first stitch, and then two single crochets in the next stitch. Here's where we begin our cable. You ready? So do you want me to mark these again so you can see where they are? I'm guessing you do, so let's do that just in case. So I'm gonna put a blue marker around the first, the first one we wanna get to, okay? It's a little bit hard to mark with the thing there. All right, so we got a blue one there, and then we have the orange one in the next one. So when we go back to find them, we know where they are. Make sure I'm not splitting anything. Let's go ahead and mark these two while we're at it. So we have the blue one is the first one. I want to make sure I'm not grabbing other yarn so it's hard to get to. And then the orange is the second. All right, so there we are. All right, so we're back to where we can find our stitches here. Hopefully that helps you guys. I really hope it does. We're gonna start off with our treble, so I yarn over my hook twice. I'm gonna go all the way over here to these post stitches. I'm gonna work around the first one with a front post treble crochet. Work around the second one with a front post treble crochet. Now I've gotta come back to these ones, right? And I gotta go behind this. So I yarn over my hook twice. I'm gonna come behind those all the way over here to where the blue one is. And I'm gonna go ahead and get my hook around that blue one. And then I shove those ones I just created out of the way. Now I'm free to go ahead and complete 
my front post treble around the stitch that has my blue marker. And then I can come over here and go around the stitch that has my orange marker and do the same thing with those first treble crochets I created pushed out of the way. Once that's done, kind of put everything back in place. Looks great. I come over here to these two single crochets and I will put two single crochets into each one. And we're back to another cable. So I yarn over my hook twice, come all the way over here to this post stitch, work my front post treble, go to the next one, work my front post treble, and then here I go. I'm going to go behind the ones I just created, come over here to where the stitch is marked with my blue marker, go around that post, and then I like to shove those stitches out of the way and create this nice treble into that one. Find the orange one. Okay, there's my post right there with my orange marker. I can go around that one and create my treble. Put everything back into place. See, it still looks good. Come over here to these singles. I'll put two single crochets in the first one and one in the last one. Pretty easy so far, right? So that was row nine once again, which represents row 13. I finish off with a chain one and I turn. Let me get my yarn is a little bit stuck here. And I'm ready to begin row 10. So I start off with a single crochet in the first two. Remember, it does not say this in the pattern, but you will be skipping that next stitch there and you will work a back post double crochet around the next post stitch. So you find it. There it is. There's one. You want to do another one around the next one. Then we're going to put two single crochets in that big space. All right. So it's the space between those front post trebles we created. And I want to remind you that single crochet represents the one we skipped here. This one will represent this one we skip over here. But let's do our next set of back post double crochets around the next post stitches. Skip one, put a single in the next two. And then here we go. We're going to skip one, do our back post double crochet around the next post stitch, back post double crochet around the next post stitch, two singles into that big space there, and then we do our post stitches again around the next two post stitches. So there's one back post double crochet. Here's a second back post double crochet. Skip one single and then do a single in the last two stitches. Chain one and turn. That's the end of row 10 or for purposes of this that would have been row 14. You can see here, can you see how it's starting to cross over and look really cool? Let's take our markers out because we don't need those anymore. So we've already used those stitches, but they came in handy to know where the stitches were that we needed to work into. Oh, cool. I hope you can see that. That looks so pretty. Now we're going to work a row 15. Okay. And this is what we're going to do. Row 15 is where we begin to cross over again. We're going to get one of these center crosses. And when we do this center cross, we're working our double or our treble crochet front post in front of the previous ones. So let me show you how this works. All right, so row 15, we do a single crochet in the first two stitches. Now we do a front post double crochet around the next two post stitches. We will single crochet in the next two stitches. So there's one 
and two. And now we're going to do a forward cable, okay? So it's a little bit tricky, but those are our post stitches right here. And then these are our post stitches over there. So we're going to prep our hook for a treble, skip those two post stitches, skip these two singles, go to this one, this post stitch, work one post, let's see, that would be a front post treble crochet. And then we're gonna do a front post treble crochet around the next one. And this time, instead of going behind those, we're going to go in front. And so would it help to mark those stitches so you can see what we're going into just like we did before? I think so, so I'll mark them. So this blue one is the one we wanna to get to first, okay? So I yarn over my hook twice, come over here to where the blue marker is and work around that post and work a front post treble crochet. Prep my hook, come back over here, go to where the post is for my orange one, go around that post and work a front post treble crochet. See when they cross over, the second set of treble crochets we did are in front of the first set, and that's what we want. We only do that here when we're in this center cable. You can take those off here. Once you have done that, you will single crochet in the next two stitches. So there's two single crochets, and then we'd work a front post double crochet around the next post stitch, a front post double crochet around the next post stitch, and then you finish off with a single and a single. You see that? So that, my friends, this entire teal green section, that is your repeat, okay? So you would repeat rows eight through 15 over and over and over until you get through row um, row 119, and then row 120 is a repeat of row eight. Row 121 is its own individual stitch pattern. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm going to show you row eight once again, cause that's what you would go into, whether you're going to repeat this stitch pattern or that's how you end after you get to row 120. And then we'll do row 121, which is the finishing off of the entire cable pattern. Cause that's the part that'll go right at the front of the cable hooded cowl, okay? So let's do row eight one more time. So we finish off row 15 with the chain one and turn. And when we go to row eight, we single crochet in the first two stitches. So there's one and two. We work a back post double crochet around the next post stitch. And we do that again around the next post stitch. Now we single crochet in the next two stitches. So there's one and two. Now we're going to do a back post double crochet around the next post. So this is, these are the crossover post stitches for the cable. So that was one. Here's a back post double crochet around the next one. And now we're going to place two single crochets into that space between those, just like we've been doing all along. And then we do a back post double crochet around the next one. Back post double crochet around the next one. Single crochet in the next two. So there's one, two. Back post double crochet around the next post. Back post double crochet around the next post. And then single crochet and single crochet to end the row chain one and turn. So that's the end of row eight. So you can see at the end of row eight, you know, it's the pattern is starting again. So if we were continuing on with this pattern, you can see with this one, here's a crossover, here's the end of the crossover on row 15, and so this would be row eight. And then you would carry on until you got to the end of row 15 again, you'd have a crossover, and then you carry on. So what we're gonna do right now is, is 
it is as if this is the end of your cable work. So we just finished row eight. So this very last row that you would do right here, this would be the top of your cable hooded cowl. You wanna do row 121, which is really easy. You'll know how to do this because there's nothing new. It's no new stitches you haven't learned yet. But row 121, we will single crochet in the first two stitches. So there's one and two. And then we will front post double crochet in the next two stitches. So there's one and two. And then we single crochet in the next two stitches. And then front post double crochet, front post double crochet, and then single and then single, and then front post double crochet, front post double crochet, single, single, front post double crochet, whoops, front post double crochet, single and single. Notice that was very similar to a row 11. And that gives you a nice clean and finished off look right there at the end of the braid of your cable. And then you would chain one and finish off your work. So you simply cut your yarn, leaving a nice long tail so you can weave in your end and give it a pull. All right. So obviously this is just one repeat. Let's go ahead and take a look at the larger one once again so you can see what the repeats look like on a larger scale. Here is the cable portion that I created to go along with the two side panels that I've already created. And you can see here, we started off with the adjustable ring right down here at the bottom. And then as we worked our post stitches and increased out, that's what got us to the 18 stitches right here at row seven, which we have marked. And then we just carry on with this stitch pattern. Remember rows eight through 15, that's about this section right here, that's the repeat. So as you repeat those, you continue on repeating those through row 119. And then when you get to row 120, that's the repeat of row eight. And then 121 is that final row that I showed you, which is essentially singles on singles and post stitches on top of post stitches to finish off and make it a nice clean line. It's a very beautiful textured stitch. I hope you can see here. It's just really gorgeous and it really is what makes this hooded cowl so vibrant and fun. Once you have all of the pieces completed, the two panels and the cable portion, it's then time to seam it all together. And Quaylen did a really cool thing, something that I love to do all the time, is using the join as a design feature and give it texture um, on the right side of the fabric. Instead of having the join hidden away on the inside, we are going to have it exposed out on the right side, which is why it was so important when you made your panels that we know what the right side is because we wanna make sure that's what's showing. So let's go ahead, grab your two panels. Once the cable portion is done, we're going to seam these up the way that Quaylen has us uh, he explains it in the pattern and then we will seam the cable portion to the panels. So we have to join the panels together first. Quaylen included a really nice diagram here to show you how you're going to seam these panels together. Now, what you're going to do is when you have the two panels completed, you want the wrong sides together. So remember, I've marked the right side of my fabric with my marker here. So I have the two wrong sides of my panels together. So if they are just like this, I can see that this side over here would represent my side A, and this side over here would represent my side B. I wanna go ahead and using a single crochet, I will join with the slip stitch right here, and single crochet these two pieces together all the way up to this point. 
Relatively easy, I'm sure you know how to do this, but let's go ahead and join some yarn and single crochet these two pieces together. Okay, before I begin with my slip stitch and single crocheting up, I am gonna go ahead and take a marker and I'm gonna mark the point that I wanna make sure I'm stopping, okay? So I wanna stop at that point. And then I'm gonna go ahead and just use some markers to hold these together. And I'm just making sure that I'm not getting off track at all as I'm seaming this together. And since yours is bigger, this might be really helpful for you. And remember, each piece has the same number of rows, so you can match them up really nicely at those turning points. You can see where the turning points are and you can make sure that you are going to single crochet as evenly as possible along this edge here, okay? And remember, a single crochet is approximately the same amount wide as it is tall. So because we have single crochet rows and we're working single crochets along them, you should be able to do one single crochet for each row you have of your panel. However, if you're going along and you find that really looks like your piece is bubbling up a little bit and you need to skip a row and then work one in the next row to make it nice and flat, you absolutely can do that. You wanna make sure that this seaming portion, these single crochets, do not make your work pucker. You wanna make it still nice and flat and nice seam, all right? So I'm gonna begin here by putting a slip stitch right down here in the bottom corner. And what I do is I just stick my hook through both of those stitches. I will yarn over my hook and pull up a loop and then yarn over and pull through. So it's like I've just kind of tied a knot there. And then working as evenly as possible, I wanna make sure I'm working through both fabrics and I'm literally just single crocheting. Pretty easy stuff. Let's see, I worked through that one. I'm gonna try and go through this hole. And it's just a delicate dance here, guys. Just make sure things are even, nothing's puckering, and you will have a nice, beautiful join, okay? I promise. Now this one, I'm starting to get them apart a little bit, so I wanna make sure I'm not doing that. And let's just work up along the way. When you get to the end where your marker is, let's go ahead and take a look at your work. You can set it down and take a peek. It should look nice and neat. I think that looks really, really good there. I have a nice little lip to my fabric and I think that's nice. I like that. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do is finish off my work. Leave a, leave a nice tail so I can weave in the end so it doesn't come undone. And I would consider my side A complete, all right? So my side A is complete. This opening here, I could take these out now. This is what was just keeping my pieces together. But technically, if this were a big hood, this opening here, that's where my head would go. So this would be going down the front portion of my body, and this is where my head would go. Now that we have that portion complete, okay, we wanna take our cable bit here and line that up with our row seven, okay? Row seven is gonna match up to our point down here, all right? And then the rest of your cabled piece here is going to be seamed up along this edge and then it will curve and go over the top. You see that? So what I do is I line them all up. So let's see, we're gonna have this row seven. I'm gonna take my marker here and I'm just going to not undo it from my cable, but I'm gonna attach it to the edge there. Let's do the same over here on this side. Oh, I'm gonna have to adjust this one, so I'm, it's right there. So that's my row seven, that is my edge. All right, so those are joined. And now I know that I want this edge to be joined up here, so I'm going to just pin those together. And then it's just a matter of just fitting and finagling the cable portion and seamed up along the cabled hood, very similar to like fitting a set-in sleeve into a sweater, okay? So I have that pinned together there. So if I 
maneuver this, let's see, let's say I want that one right there. Let's pin those together at that point. And these can be adjusted later. Like if I find, oh, those are too close, or I need to make that adjustment there, we can, we can do that, right? We, these are not set in stone here. Let's see. I want to make sure it's even as possible. Right there. Let's just peek and see what we got. All right, so let's fold this. That goes there. So if those points there and these here, that means that has to be stretched out a little and we'll just start seaming up. And when we get everything to that point, we'll make sure it's nice and flat. Well, I'm gonna seam up this edge up to that point, make it sure it's flat. And then I will flip this over and do the same thing. It's still a single crochet, y'all. I'm gonna single crochet that edge up to that point, make sure it's flat, and then I'll continue on with the top and make sure it's all connected together. So just like before, I will start off with my slip stitch and just single crochet along the way. All right, so I have seamed this up. Let's see what we got here so far. I think I'm pretty good on the sides. So I feel confident enough to continue on and just making sure that this is nice and even up to the end. So I have put both of my loops here on the stitch markers that were holding that center portion. So that way I could hold the loop and continue on. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go ahead and continue on all the way up through. You can do the same thing. All right, so let's clean up my little mess I have going on here. I have seamed up both the sides. I'm not gonna cut that one yet. I'm not gonna cut that side yet. Um, but I have seamed up the sides. You can see here, right? Here's my cable pattern. There's my cable pattern and the nice edge. Here's the opposite side. And now what we're supposed to do is we're supposed to work a round of single crochets around the head opening and then work a row around of single crochets around this bottom opening. So the reason I didn't cut my yarn yet after I finished the second one here is rather than rejoining my yarn, I'm just gonna go ahead and continue on with my yarn still attached and work my edging of single crochet right around this opening. So I will just start off here, I will chain one, and then once again, I'm just going to keep everything as nice and even as possible and just single crochet around this head opening. And I encourage you to do the same thing. If you don't want to keep yours attached, you want to cut it and rejoin, you absolutely could do that. You could do that with a, a different color even. Um, this is just a way to hopefully uh, prevent even more ends to weave in. So let's just continue on and single crochet around the head opening. When you get back to the start, go ahead and join with a slip stitch. You can finish off your work. Okay, you would just weave in that end, but you can see here that just is a really nice finishing touch to the head opening, right? The hood edge right there, so simple. And then of course you can do the same thing with the edging down here at the bottom, just single crochet all around this bottom edge for the finishing touch. 
All right, so we've worked along with this little tiny version right here of the hooded cowl. Obviously, this is so tiny. I wonder if it would fit like an American Girl doll. But let's take a look at the sample once again to get a real look at what everything is supposed to look like in real size. Okay, so this is the top of the hood, and you can see the cables right there. Um, the nice center crossover one, remember that one was forward. These one here, these are all the back cables. And then right up here at the top of the hood, it has that nice finishing with those final two rounds, or final two rows. And then this last row of edging with single crochets all around that hood opening. Very simple and subtle, and it was just, it's just really nicely done. It just brings it all together. Um, once again, the seaming portion is added as a design feature, so it is meant to show on the right side of the fabric, both down the front and along the back edge of the cabling. And then let's take a look at the edging down here at the bottom also. So you can see down here here, the nice row of single crochet edging all worked along the bottom here just to tie it all in together. And by starting that seam on row seven, we have, we have allowed this nice little point here to happen when we started this cable section. So cute, such a unique design and one that is sure to just wow everybody that sees you wearing it. It is just a showstopper. I love this cable stitch. I hope you have enjoyed it too. I hope I have demystified some of the problems you might have run into making cable stitches by using those stitch markers or by changing colors um, every row for those first seven rows. I really just wanted to try and give you a way to really see what it is we were doing. If you do make this cable hooded cowl, make sure you share with us on social media. Use hashtag MarleyBird on Instagram or Facebook and I will find Find your finished project and smash your like button. I'm Marley Bird, proud national spokesperson for Red Heart Yarns. This is The Cabled Hooded Cowl by Quaylen Stark. Thanks everybody, bye. Hey, thanks for joining me today on the channel. If you want more videos just like that one, check out some of these other videos that I've already handpicked for you. And don't forget to hit subscribe so that way you're up to date whenever I release a new video. And don't forget, smash that like button as my kids say. Bye guys.